This is AQA A-Level Chemistry and it is a required practical question from paper three of the series. This is from RPA3 um, and this is the first question that we're looking at in this series. I'm going to recommend that you pause, have a go at each section and then you can review the answer once you have tried. So here you can see parts A, B and C. And finally, moving on to parts D, E and F. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to go through that, try it, plot those graphs and see what you can do with the data. Let's now start to take a look through the answers. So we have got here a student investigating the effect of temperature on rate of reaction between sodium thiosulfate solution and dilute hydrochloric acid. And we've got the equation there provided. Student mixes solutions together, places the flask on a piece of paper marked with a cross, and the student records the time for the cross to disappear. Uh, the cross disappears because the mixture is becoming cloudy. Uh, we've got the table of results at this point and moving in to part A. Student uses a stopwatch to measure time. The stopwatch shows each time to the nearest 0 0.01 seconds. However, the student will record to the nearest second and not to the nearest 0 0.1 seconds. Why would that be the case? And what we're looking for here is that actually it's really hard to judge the nearest 0 0.01 seconds when a cross is disappearing. We're also dealing here with reaction time, about the time it takes for you to decide you're going to press the button. So to the nearest second does make considerably more sense. Then we've got rate of reactional proportional to 1 over t completing the table above and what we've got here is lots of them that have been calculated so 1 over 87 is 0 0.0115 we're going to do 1 over 12 which is 0 0.083 and we're then able to place that into the table above. At that point, we've now got a full set of data. We've got 1 over T, and we're going to plot that against temperature. They've been very kind. They've provided you with a um, set of axes. It's already done. You have just got to plot the correct points. So you go through, and you can see that we are able to match these as we go through. And from there, what we can very clearly see is that we have got an anomaly. And we'll talk about the importance of that anomaly in a moment. But it does mean that we can see quite a clear curve of best fit that we can then add in. Okay, so we're gonna use that graph to answer parts D, E and F. So using your line of best fit, estimate the time for the cross to disappear at 40 degrees Celsius. Now, what you want to do here is show very clearly how you're getting to your answer. So you're gonna draw that line in. You're gonna go up at 40 degrees until you meet the line and then draw the line going across. If you try to do that by eye, there's a very strong chance you're going to misread it. But then it's just about using the appropriate scale, reading it carefully, and we can see that takes us to 1 over t, 0.036. It doesn't want 1 over t, it wants the time. So we need to do 1 over that value. And that takes us to an answer of 27.78 seconds. I've put the equation down at the bottom here. Suggest by considering the product of this reaction why small amounts of reactants are used in this experiment. Um, well, let's take a look at that one. We're making SO2. SO2 is a toxic gas. If we made huge amounts of that, it might be a cause of risk. It might be a danger. So that's what we're looking for there. The student could do the experiment at lower temperatures using an ice bath. Suggest why a student chose not to carry out experiments at temperatures in the range of one to 10. Well, actually what we'd be looking at there is an incredibly slow reaction. We know that higher temperatures mean higher rates of reaction. And it's then, I suppose, a question of effective use of time. So that takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.